Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Lee. You're watching Dark Roots Creations, and these are my worst books of 2023. So first off, I'm sorry if you love these books. I just didn't. These, I think, are two and a half stars to one star. I didn't include anything I DNF'd because what's the point? But um, instead of rehashing the what the book's about, I'm just going to add in the clips here of what I reviewed at the time, starting from, I think, the two and a half, which would be the best, to one, which would be the worst. Um, I hope you enjoy. All day I've been listening to The End of the Sixes by Kate White, and it was okay. Uh, in this book, I'm sorry. I just want to like, I just want to talk about this book and get it over with. But I'm just still struggling today. In this one, there's a woman named Phoebe who she's like a celebrity. She writes about celebrities or whatever. There's some sort of a, a recent scandal of plagiarism, so she's kind of like a falls from grace, and she winds up becoming a teacher at a school where her friend. Gwen is headmistress, dean, whatever. And oh, a girl named Lily gets killed and is found drowned. And Gwen asks her to, asks Phoebe to start doing research on it. So you find out that this has something, like for some reason Phoebe has experience with this. And it, it's suspected that there's like a secret society. Um, it's suspected that there's like a secret society behind what happened to her. So a secret society called the Sixes. So Phoebe's kind of doing the research for that. This is super slow going, super slow going. Like it wasn't, so I, Buddy read this with Sharon. So what we do is we read to the halfway point, we discuss it and then we read the other half. I'd say I wasn't even remotely interested until like 40% in. And even then it still wasn't that interesting. Um, I'll say right off the bat, Sharon absolutely called the big bad of the book. There were a couple other people along the way. Nothing that was, no twists that was like, wow, none at all. Um, it, it was just like almost like the author was telling a story and it was just like okay and then it ends there was like no real big twist to me there was no shock value to this at all it was okay um I've been trying to debate what I'm gonna give okay like star rating wise I'm I'm gonna go with two and a half it was okay <laughs> that was it I previously read two books by her I read The Wife Upstairs and The Reckless Girls which I enjoyed both. I can't necessarily say that about this one. So this is kind of a dual timeline. We're, we're in the present, we're with Emily and Chess. They were best friends when they were younger. They're both writers of different things. Chess is more like um, women's lifestyle, I guess. And Emily writes Cozy Mysteries. Uh, where we're at in the story, when we come in, they're adults and uh, Emily's husband, Mark and her divorcing and Mark like wants royalties off of her books. And Chess says to her, Chess who, that's her nickname, her real name is Jessica. So I found Chess to be just really um, annoying. Anyway, um, so she says, hey, I got this villa in Italy. Let's go and just like relax. And once they get there, the plan is to kind of, for Emily at least, to kind of like get her writing going again. Because she's kind of like, she's, it, it's almost like a point. And this is, this was the thing I found was interesting, was that, my sister's on her way. Um, the thing that I found most interesting was like the fight between Mark and her. Like he, I think at one point in time in the past, she had said like, oh, I wouldn't have been able to make this book without Mark. And she wasn't gonna change her name professionally, but he convinced her to. And now he's like, well, like I was half of this writing team, so I deserve half of the money. And on kind of like on anything she writes in the series going forward. 
So now it's almost like she has like writer's block or hesitation. And he's like, uh, don't even think about not finishing this book. Like you're going to write it. I want my money type of thing. That was to me the most interesting part. If you read the synopsis, it makes it seem like something different is going to, no, not that it's going to be something different. So that's the one side. The other side is the villa that they're staying at. I'm like, what is up right here? Anyway, um, the villa that they're staying at is infamous for a previous murder. So it was Mary and her stepsister, Laura, and there was like some musicians there and they stayed there in, I want to say 76, 74, 74, I think. And, um, some tragedy goes down there. Um, Mary had wrote a book about it. Laura had wrote a song about it. Like they kind of got popular off of that. And so it's almost like now the girls are the, now Chess and Emily are there. And it's like, is, is it something to do with the villa? That's like kind of going to cause like some drama and other stuff to go on. In that way, it sounded good. I just feel like nothing happened. I feel like telling you the whole Mark and Emily thing was the most exciting thing that happened. Um, so it's sort of like, um, Emily's kind of reading some of Mary's stuff and trying to like find the history. Chess is kind of doing it too in a different way. So you're like, you're getting the stories through those type of chapters. My mom drives slow. It was <laughs> Um, so you're like thinking like you're going to have these two dual timelines and the, well, I, one thing I didn't like is like in the audiobook, it kind of, you'd have an Emily and Chess, and then it would just go into parts of like the history with Mary and her sister. And then it was also being told, but also like reading parts of Mary's book, which was, uh, what is her name? Um, Lilith Rising. And then there's every once, like there was two like of these podcasters who had nothing to do with the story they just they're like almost like i guess like a true true crime podcast that were telling stories about this so there was no break while you were listening to this to let you know we were going to be switching over to something else and that was another annoying part so i just didn't find it interesting i did buddy read this with sharon she equally didn't find it interesting we have both agreed that going into 2024 if we're kind of indifferent we're just going to put it down and move on like I really, don't, like, she kind of said it first, like, I don't want to do that, like, it, it's boring, I agreed, but because I had read the other two books and enjoyed them, I was kind of like, no, oh, like, we can continue along, I wish I didn't, because I feel like I wasted my time, we had that talk on Tuesday, we were supposed to finish and chat again on Friday, I didn't even get back to the book till Friday afternoon, and then, like, kind of, like, read through it, like, because I just didn't care, so, anyway, that was that book, I gave that two stars, um, I just finished The Hint in the Hashtag, which is number 19 in The Inn at Holiday Bay by Kathy Daly. I have to say I was kind of bored through most of this one. I didn't care at all about the the murder. I, I, I'm i still lost and confused on what even happened. <laughs> um, the only reason I was interested in this one is because we were talking more about The Bistro, which is a spinoff series, The Bistro at Holiday Bay or in Holiday Bay. That was really the only thing like part of it that I was interested in. And like the main character stories, like what's going on with them. Don't want to really say anything because I don't want to spoil anything since this isn't number 19. Um, but yeah, the mystery I thought, the, the murder, whatever I thought was stupid, I still don't know what happened. Um, partially it was probably because I was listening to it. I was having Alexa read it to me instead of reading it myself. I got it through Kindle. So that was kind of what I did. Oh, now we're going to move up here. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I know that definitely affected it, but I wasn't really interested anyway. Um, I finished two books. So first I did finish Secret Star by Nora Roberts. That was the third book in the Stars of Mithra series. Um, super disappointed with that one. I gave it one and a half stars. Um, it was very insta-lost, sex the whole time. The resolution of the stars was stupid. Uh, just wasn't into that one, which sucks because I, I enjoyed book one and two. So 
that's it for that one. Don't even want to waste my time talking about it anymore. I'm thinking of ending things by Ian Reed. This story, this story starts out where we are with a guy and a girl who are dating and they are going to the town where he grew up and they're going to go have dinner with his parents. The dinner was really weird. And the parents were kind of very insistent that like she stay away. He's kind of driving back through his, you know, as the, after they left, he's driving back and stop at a Dairy Queen, even though it's winter and it's snowing. Excuse me. And it's winter and it's snowing and it's cold and they, but they go to the Dairy Queen and there's like a weird interaction with the girl there. And then they wind up going to the school that he went to. And I'm going to stop right there. But well, let me go one step further. They went to the school there. He went, he got out of the car to look at something. She gets out and then she can't find him. And the car is gone. And I'm going to leave it at that. There was a weird story that she told in the beginning about a man like at her window when she was younger. Sorry, this is going down some. Um, and every between every chapter, there's a little chapter of people giving you information. They sound like they're cops or detectives at a crime scene. Um, so you have that going on. I'm sorry if you're getting tilted. Uh, and again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if this video is like all over the place. Um, so that's it. Uh, there's more that happens at the end. I feel like that would be giving a lot away, but giving nothing away because nothing that I just told you matters. Nothing matters. Um, I'm thinking of ending things that could mean a bunch of different things. And this was also a Netflix, it was a Netflix movie series. I'm not sure. I didn't watch it. I think this is one of those things that either you get it or you don't, you love it or you hate it. I, after I, after I read the book, listen to the book. I read a bunch of reviews. I went to a bunch of blogs. I went to Reddit. Um, and I understand what happened. I just think it was stupid. And I know there's other people out there who think this was brilliant and amazing. I'm just not one of them. Um, so I gave it one star. So that's it. Those are my worst books of the year. If you've read these uh, and enjoyed or hated them, let me know. And if not, let me know what your worst book of the year was. Next up, I will have the best I read in 2023. So we have better things to look forward to. In the meanwhile, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.